Now let us see the journey of Indian rupee. What has been the performance of Indian rupee as far as exchange rate over the period of time since the independence is concerned, right? So immediately at the time of independence, that is on the 15th of August, the Indian rupee was linked to the British pound and its value was at par with the American dollar, right? So this was called the fixed exchange rate regime, right? The fixed exchange rate, rate regime, right? So this was there. Then between 1948 to 1966, this was fixed at 4.79 against a dollar. So the value kept changing, but again, it was the fixed exchange rate. That is, it was decided by the government itself. Later on, the rupees link with the British currency was broken in 1971 and it was linked directly to the US dollar, right? In 1993, for the first time, the exchange rate was freed to be determined by the market and in 1993, the rupee stood at 31.37 against a dollar. So, till 1993, from 1947 to 1993 we had the fixed exchange rate system and from 1993 onwards till now we have the flexible exchange rate system right flexible exchange rate system the rupee traded in the range of 40 to 50 between 2000 to 2010. So till 2010, it was hovering around 50. Now let us see the trend of rupee during the last five years. So this is the trend between 2015 to 2016, 2016 to 2017, 2017 to 2018, 2018 to 2019 and 2019 to 2000. 20. So you can see that in 2015 the rate was approximately 62 rupees 62 per US dollar. So this thing we are we are uh, actually calculating the dollar and the INR exchange rate, right? So 62 in 2016 one of the peak rate was approximately 68 68 INR. Per US dollar then we can see this is one of the lowest between 2017 2018 that means it was approximately 62 right so here from here to here there is depreciation in the external value from here to here there is appreciation in the external value from here to here again there is depreciation so can you see between 2018 to 2019 this is a peak that is approximately 74 again there was a low and now again it is increasing in the month of February 2020 right so this figure is on 6th of March 2020 so you can see that this has been the fluctuation in the Indian rupee now let us understand the concept of depreciation depreciation in the domestic currency depreciation of domestic currency the meaning meaning is increase in the exchange rate or fall in the external value of domestic currency very very simple so let us understand the depreciation concept So depreciation is basically the increase in the exchange rate that means if today one US dollar is equal to 40 rupees and tomorrow this one US dollar becomes 50 rupees 
this means there is increase in the exchange rate right however the external value of the rupee is decreased from 0.025 to 0 0.02 dollar per rupee right so there is a increase in the exchange rate but decrease in the external value this is the case of depreciation this is the case of depreciation now what are the reasons what are the reasons why there will be decrease in the external value of domestic currency or of INR Indian rupee so there will be decrease in the external value when either the demand of the domestic currency decreases or supply of the domestic currency increases or the demand of the foreign currency increases or the supply of the foreign currency decreases so these and these can be the four different situation in which this depreciation can happen now let us see that what can be the reasons right so again coming to coming back to the meaning in layman's terms it means now one dollar can be exchanged for more rupees so one earlier one dollar was equivalent to 40 rupees now more rupees so it can be suppose for example 50 rupees right that is the depreciation of rupee and the simultaneous appreciation of dollar right so whenever there is depreciation of domestic currency that is that will mean there is appreciation in the foreign currency right friends i am discussing the same concept in different ways i am trying to interlink it as much as, pos as possible i understand that you might feel sir this lecture is going in detail this lecture is taking time but my purpose is that you can solve each and every question which is asked from this topic so do not worry just be with me right i will take you to the examination level in a very simplified manner right so have a patience now so depreciation of the domestic currency that means increase in the exchange rate or fall in the value of external value of the domestic currency because of additional demand of foreign currency so why this additional demand of foreign currency can be there this additional demand can be because of imports being high in india right now these imports can increase either in the value or in the quantity right so in case of india there are two major imported items one is the crude oil another is the gold so either the value of crude oil increases that means the global oil prices go up because of the crisis like iran versus us issue the uh, this uh, uh, syria crisis and many more crises so either the prices will go up because of that the value will go up right or the quantity of consumption will increase because of increase in the industry increase in the population of india so increase uh, increase in the consumption of uh, fuel so all this is leading to the increase in the import of the crude oil so that means the quantity of the crude oil is increasing so one reason can be increase in the oil prices another reason can be increase in the gold so either the quantity the quantity is increased in case of uh, wedding season or the value 
तो वैल्यू कैन इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ द इंक्रीज इन द गोल्ड प्राइसेस वर्ल्ड वाइड राइट सो द एडिशनल डिमांड ऑफ फॉरन करेंसी इज रिक्वायर्ड वेन द इम्पोर्ट आर इंक्रीजिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इंक्रीज इन द एक्सपोर्ट इंक्रीज इन द इम्पोर्ट वी हैव टू पे फॉरन करेंसी to the external person to the seller of the good from whom we are buying the goods so either the import is increasing or the export is coming down this can be another reason because of this that the supply of the foreign currency is decreasing right so export is coming down or the foreign investment is flying away because of this the foreign currency demand is increasing so because of the bad policies of the government because of the npa crisis because of the uh, poor renewable energy policy because of the low and order situation there can be n number of reason because of all those reasons if the foreign investment is flying away from india right if, if it is flying from away from india then the demand of the foreign currency will increase and there can be depreciation excess supply of foreign curren domestic currency excess supply of domestic currency how is that possible excess supply of domestic currency can be because of easy monetary policy i hope you remember so easy monetary policy means the repo rate is reduced repo rate is reduced because of uh, you know Uh, the inflation situation being in in control so the government want to increase the economic activity and because of that the interest rate are interest rate are actually decreased and because of the in, in decrease in the interest rate the domestic currency availability is increased and when there is decrease in the interest rate then also the foreign investment will fly away because when interest rate is decreased in india they have less incentive to invest in india they want to invest outside india right so this this easy monetary policy can be one reason of excess supply of the domestic currency right and there are other reasons let us see now so now let us see uh so okay this slide we will see later on because at this point of time you will not be happy studying this so what are the reasons for the rupee depreciation first reason is demand supply rule a uh, lot of this we have already discussed so far second reason is fiscal deficit right so fiscal deficit basically means that government has to borrow right so fiscal deficit happens when the government expenses is more than the government receipt so when expenses of the government are more than the government receipt then the deficit happens and in such case the government has to borrow and then when government has to borrow that means the foreign currency demand is increasing and because the foreign currency demand is increasing the value of the foreign currency increases and the value of the domestic currency goes down and it results into the depreciation right oil prices we have discussed and we will discuss more dollar strengthening inflation volatility in the equity market so we let us discuss each one of them now first of all demand supply rule so demand supply rule basically is pertaining to the import and export situation so if the demand for the import is increasing if the demand for the import is increasing that will lead to the demand for more foreign currency and we already discussed there are primarily two reasons the oil and the gold because of which the demand for the foreign currency can increase export export can come down because of various reasons because of protectionism outside india the countries like usa they are protecting their economy so they don't want to outsource the it product to india because of that the export is coming down so the supply of foreign currency is coming down so the value of foreign currency will increase so the domestic currency value is, will decrease right so this is how this import and export will play out every country has an external account to keep track of the cross border transactions so there are cross border transactions which are recorded in in the balance of payment statement 
and it has two account one is the current account another is the capital account so the transactions happen in the form of goods services transfers capital account transactions in the same times our current account deficit has widened and capital flows are not being able to bridge the gap so current account deficit has widened that means the imports are more and exports are less so this situation that we discussed this is because of the this results into basically the current account deficit only now how does the current account deficit impact the value of rupee right the value of rupee so when there is current account deficit when there is current account deficit that means the import is more than export and when import is more than export that means the demand of the dollar will increase right so to pay for this import we will increase demand of the dollar right and because of increase in the demand of the dollar that is demand of the foreign currency the value of the US dollar will appreciate against the Indian rupee that means our domestic currency is depreciating right so increase in the current account deficit may lead to the rupee depreciation friends I am trying to interlink as much concept as possible do not get confused whenever you are in confusion simply apply the logic of demand supply simply see whether the demand of the foreign currency is increasing or decreasing accordingly you can decide the price and the discussion that we did in the in the starting demand supply right exchange rate regime right exchange rate versus external value do not forget that that is the fundamental right now oil prices how the oil prices resulting into the rupee depreciation so the domestic demand for the oil can increase because of increase in the population or because of the increase in the vehicle density right so increase in the population or increase in the vehicle density because of these two reasons the domestic demand for the oil can increase the demand for the dollar also increases right so when there is a more demand for the oil the dollar dollar demand will also increase and this demand for oil is also increasing because of the poor subsidies policy because the government is giving more and more subsidy that is resulting into the more people consuming more petroleum products so they have the incentive to, to consume the petroleum products there is no disincentive to them now India is the third largest crude oil importing country in the world coming only after US and China so this is one of the fact you can see how much important these oil prices are Indian oil imports India imports more than 80% of its crude oil requirements thereby making it more vulnerable to changes in the international oil market so more than 80% of our crude oil requirements we are importing for example if the crude oil prices increase our total import cost will also increase affecting our current account balance which in turn affects the currency market right so if the coil if the crude oil prices increase because of Syria crisis because of US Iran crisis or more recently because of the coronavirus crisis so there can be a number of reasons because of which the crude oil prices can increase so if the crude oil prices increase the total import bill will also increase that means <coughs> the currency markets will be impacted badly <coughs> volatility in the equity market right so this can impact the foreign investment equity investment made by FIs in the Indian companies right so equity means the investment which has been made by the foreign investors into the Indian companies if the investors withdraw their money it decreases the inflow of dollars in the Indian market 
right so why will the investors will withdraw the money the investors will withdraw the money because of interest rate fluctuation so either the interest rate in the USA are increasing or the interest rate in India are decreasing in any of these situation the investors will start withdrawing the amount from the India or in case the India's laws are not becoming more reformed if there is no reform then also it can happen so if the investors withdraw their money it decreases the inflow of dollars in the Indian market thus by demand and supply rule the dollar becomes stronger a temporary ban on import of gold coins caused withdrawal of the investment by the FIA for example now there are other causes decline in the country's overall export so it can happen because of the poor infrastructure because of the uh, different issues for example phytosanitary uh, bans which are adopted by the uh, countries of euro countries for example this coronavirus issue because for example uh, because of USA's protectionist policies the overall export may come down and because of decrease in the overall export there can be decline in the export revenue and which can ultimately reduce the availability of the foreign currency if the availability of the foreign currency is reduced that means the rupee value is also reduced right increase in the demand of imported goods and services right so when people people's in, uh, people's standard of living is increasing their income level is increasing people want to buy more and more imported goods imported laptop imported mobile phone imported car imported bag so we want to have more and more of imported goods we want to enjoy the luxuries of the outside India so in that case the demand for the imported goods and services will increase which will lead to the trade deficit and increase in the current account deficit which will lead to the net outflow of the currency which can actually weaken the external exchange rate leading to the currency depreciation right so the overall export decline and increase in the demand of import both will actually lead to the currency depreciation next is monetary policy of the central bank so if the central bank reduces its policy interest rate it can lead to the outflow of the hot money right so we have already discussed in case the central government reduces the rate of interest because the it, it want to give boost to the economic activity if the interest rate are decrease the investors will have no incentive to invest into Indian market they will they will want to invest outside India because of that the money will flow from India to the USA and because of that the supply of domestic currency will the supply of foreign currency will come down because of that the value of foreign currency will increase and the price of the for the domestic currency will increase now what are the impacts of fall in the rupee against the dollar right so there can be positive impact as well as there can be negative impact so we will have both the positive impact and the negative impact first first of all let us see who are the winners so winners of the ex winners of the depreciation are exporters why why they so suppose uh, the exporter has agreed into a transaction worth hundred dollar with a US company right so these import and export agreement generally they happen in the dollar term because dollar is the hard currency dollar is the most appreciated and most acceptable currency in the worldwide so most of the people they they want to sign the agreement in the form of US dollar only right so suppose India's exporter he signed the agreement of 100 US dollar right now suppose earlier the price was 40 rupees per dollar now this price has increased 50 to 50 rupees per dollar right so exchange rate in, is increased in in the first case exporter will get how much of Indian rupee only 100 into 40 that is 4000 rupees and because of the depreciation the Indian exporter will get how much 5000 right so exporters revenue has increased from 4000 rupees to the 
फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट राइट सो एक्सपोर्टर विल गेट द बेनिफिट सेकेंड डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट इंडस्ट्री डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट इंडस्ट्री वाई दैट सपोज वी टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ आगरा इन द आगरा द रेट ऑफ पर रूम पर डे बुकिंग इज फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज नाउ अर्लियर इफ द फॉरिन टूरिस्ट वॉन्ट टू कम इन टू इंडिया द फॉरिन टूरिस्ट हैज टू पे फोर थाउजेंड अपॉन फोर्टी दैट इज हंड्रेड डॉलर now after the depreciation from 40 to 50 he or she has to pay 4000 upon 50 that means just 80 dollar so because of the depreciation in the indian rupee the cost of traveling to india is decreasing right so the domestic tourist industry will see a jump the foreign tra- the foreign travelers into india they will increase number 3 the workers gaining jobs in the export industry definitely if the exporters revenue are increasing it will actually positively impact the people who are working in the export industry number 4 economic growth might increase economic growth might increase yes very true so because of the because of the depreciation the import cost goes up right import cost goes up when import cost goes up the people will want to buy from the domestic country that means the domestic demand will increase that means if the demand is increased the production will also increase so gdp will also increase if the gdp is increased the economic growth will automatically increase economic growth will happen number 5 current account deficit should improve right why why this why this current account deficit should improve so if more export revenue is coming more domestic tourism is coming economic growth is happening it will actually positively impact the current account deficit who are the losers who are the losers because of the rupee depreciation number 1 the consumers who buy the imported goods because the cost of import increases why that so suppose we take the example of laptop suppose the value of laptop in the us dollar is 1000 dollar so earlier any importer has to pay how much 100 into 40 rupees sorry 1000 into 40 that is 40000 so earlier the cost of import import of laptop was 40000 rupees now after this 40 has become 50 the cost of buying is now 50000 rupees right so this is how the consumers who buy the import they will get adversely impacted number 2 the residents who holiday abroad so similar similar example goes so if the cost of hotel for one day booking is 1000 dollar in usa earlier the cost of traveling was the cost of hotel was 40000 now the cost will become 50000 so the people who want to holiday outside india they will be adversely impacted number 3 the firms who buy imported raw material so similarly their cost of raw material will also increase number 4 those on fixed income or wages who see inflation rise faster so if someone is having the fixed income or wages they will also be impacted number 5 the foreign exporters or tourist industry so they will also badly impacted why because the because if the resident who are holiday abroad their cost is increasing so the foreign foreign tourist industry will also get down so here you can see effect of depreciation if import become more expensive right so because of depreciation if earlier 
something was available for 40 now the same thing is available for 50 rupees right so import become expensive and export become cheaper so we have seen in the previous example the export exporter actually benefit if import are becoming more expensive that means the quantity of import will decrease and if exporters are becoming more cheaper that means the export quantity will increase if import is decreasing and export is increasing if import is decreasing and export is increasing that means the demand for the production will rise right so the demand from the domestic industries to produce goods and services will rise and when this demand increases that means more production will happen that means the GDP will increase if the GDP increases that means the economic growth will increase the economic growth will happen right so because of the depreciation they can be positive impact upon the economic growth and if import become more expensive import quantity is reduced export quantity is increased the current account balance of payment will also improve because exports are improving and imports are decreasing right <coughs> so, so one impact is upon the current account another impact is upon the economic growth and the third impact is upon the inflation the inflation impact is actually adverse how is that so in case of inflation because of import becoming more expensive it will bring inflation to the country so suppose the oil prices become high so when there is rupee depreciation the cost of imported oil will increase and because of increase in the cost of imported oil it will impact the domestic industry the transportation sector of the India railways roadways wherever the fuel is being used it will impact all those industries which are directly or indirectly dependent upon the uh, the petroleum products the gas industry fertilizer chemicals industry etc so the their cost of production will go up when their cost of production goes up it will actually resulting into the increase in the prices of goods and services in India that means there will be inflation right so because of the rupee, rupee depreciation there can be high inflation also right so this is the adverse impact people who benefit we have already seen again the people um, impo uh, the exporters NRIs will also get benefited IT sector will benefit because of increase in export revenue right so this IT sector is basically one of the biggest exporter and in the in case of rupee depreciation they will get benefit benefit to the hotel industry we have already seen a domestic hotel industry will benefit so we we took the example of Agra Agra hotel right so same example benefit to the investors who have invested into the international fund so the people who have invested into international fund suppose they get the earning of hundred dollar from the invest international fund earlier they were getting rupees 50 that means 100 into 40 means 4000 now they are getting rupees 50 that means they are getting rupees 5000 so they will actually get benefited so you can see over here this red line indicates the external value of Indian rupee not that yeah so basically the exchange rate so there is depreciation in the exchange rate exchange rate is increasing and external value is going down because of the rupee depreciation you can see there is jump in the stock prices of the IT industries so there is an inverse relationship opposite relationship between the rupee depreciation and the stock prices of the IT companies right positive impacts number one on the foreign investment right 
<coughs> so the foreign investors may get attracted to invest in domestic assets such as housing market so let us see the example for example if any house is available for rupees 10 lakh in india so earlier the foreign investor has to pay how much 10 lakh divided by 40 that is approximately 25000 dollar now because of depreciation the foreign investor has to give only 10 lakh upon 50 that is 2000 dollar so the same indian product property is available at a low cost for the foreign investor right so because of the rupee depreciation the foreign investment will actually come into india right so they will try to buy the local real estate number two aggregate demand so we have already seen in the slide that this aggregate demand will go up so this is the same point this aggregate demand will go up this is the same point long term positive impact the depreciation of the domestic currency in a floating exchange rate regime number one increases its export we have seen in case of IT industry in case of hotel industry tourism etc number two it boosts the spending number three it can make the economy look better for the foreign investors right because the property prices they come down from the foreign investor point of view this can increase the flow of in foreign investment which can cancel out some of the effects of depreciation right so the adverse impacts of the depreciation can be actually controlled so now let us see what are the other negative impacts so some of the negative impacts we have already seen the negative impacts on the importers the people who import the goods the negative impact on the foreign tourist industries right increase in the oil prices which is leading to the inflation right what are the other negative price impact one is the inflation only so increase in the cost of import suppose the cost of oil import this will lead to cost push inflation right so because of increase in the cost of import of oil the cost of transportation will increase the cost of production in the industries like fertilizer gas etc that will increase whereas there will be increase in the domestic demand right so the demand for the indian products can increase when there is demand for the indian products and the supply do not increase correspondingly suddenly that will lead to the demand pull inflation right so there will be cost push inflation and demand pull inflation fall in the real wages right so depreciation induced inflation right so when there is inflation because of depreciation that will actually adversely impact the wages of the people so if suppose any worker is getting 10,000 rupees before rupee depreciation the rate of inflation was just 3% and now the rate of inflation is 5% so the cost of living of the worker has increased because of increase in the cost of living the worth of this 10,000 is reduced the purchasing power of this 10,000 rupees is decreased so that is there is fall in the real wages on property the value of the domestic property for the country's citizens does not change much right <clears throat> however the existing foreign investor right so just be careful in the earlier slide we were discussing about the foreign investor who want to buy the person who is interested in buying the property in india here we are talking about the existing foreign investor however the existing foreign investors may lose money as the value of existing property in that country would be now lesser in the foreign currency right so suppose the there is a value of 10 lakh rupees in india right so earlier when there was an exchange rate of 40 that time the value of india's property was 2500 dollar now this is just 2000 dollar so from the perspective of foreign investor 
earlier the value of investment was $2,500 now the value is just $2,000 so this is how the property prices will decline for the foreign investor and they will they will be adversely impacted so what what are the possible measures that can be taken by the Reserve Bank of India to control the situation number one using the foreign exchange reserve right so in case of rupee depreciation one of the reason is the excess rupee or shortage of foreign currency right suppose shortage of dollar so the RBI will infuse RBI will infuse the dollars into Indian market right so RBI will infuse the dollars into the Indian market this is how this foreign exchange reserves can be utilized to control the situation and act this actually happens so when the, the depreciation is very extreme right so suppose the rate exchange rate goes beyond 80 in that case RBI will surely do this in fact RBI do not wait for that long if there is sudden increase in the in the in the in the exchange rate even then the RBI can use this as a short term measure number two making the investments attractive right so RBI can make the investments more attractive by easing the KYC norms for example the KYC norms right so know your customer norms can be eased out number three raising the interest rate raising the interest rate so if the interest rates are increased that will mean the foreign investment FII or FDI they will get attracted to India right that means the foreign currency supply will increase if the foreign currency supply increases that means the depreciation will be controlled right so using the foreign exchange reserve making the investments attractive and raising the rate of interest these are the three different ways through which central bank can contribute next the measures which can be taken by the central government number one improving the environment for FDI right so this environment can be improved through relaxing the FDI norms right so suppose earlier only 49% was allowed in a particular sector now that increase that there can be increase in the limit to 70% 100% or whatsoever number two increasing the external commercial borrowing so the external commercial borrowing norms they can they can be eased out number three policy reforms such as goods and services tax direct tax code insolvency and bankruptcy code digitization right easing the labor law all these will actually go in the direction of ease of doing business when there is ease of doing business then the more and more FDI will come or FII will come the foreign investment will come number four creating the infrastructure and promoting the inclusive growth again this will also attract the foreign investment right so all these steps are being taken only to increase the supply of foreign currency or decreasing 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 the availability of the domestic currency what can be the other measures improving the Indian education system if the Indian edu education system is improved the Indian students do not need to go abroad they do not need to spend the foreign currency outside India so the foreign currency will remain into India there will be no shortage of foreign currency right in fact the people from outside India they will come to study into India they will bring their foreign exchange 
right so improving the education system can also help the controlling rupee depreciation widening the government bonds investor base right so the government bonds investor base investor base can be widened it will attract the foreign investors and it will stop the domestic investors from sending their money outside india reducing the subsidy given by the government if the subsidy on the petroleum products is decreased if the subsidy on the petroleum products is decreased that will actually reduce the unnecessary consumption of petroleum products if the consumption of petroleum products is decreased that means the demand for the import of oil will decrease in house infrastructure projects realizing the demographic dividend realizing the demographic dividend means more and more people can go outside india and send the foreign remittances to india or more and more people can open the startup innovation in into india and they can export more and more goods right so realizing the demographic dividend is another another uh, measure improving the climate for foreign investors we have already seen other solutions include boosting up the import export incentive sector intensive sectors like it textile pharma right so export intensive sectors they can be boosted or the import substituting industries they can be developed formulate the policies and restrictions on the gold import so as much as possible the gold import should be restricted so the government carried out so this uh, gold bond scheme for that right promote the policies like make in india it will attract the foreign investment improve the tourism bring back the indian money in the indian black money so the government has taken a lot of initiatives for bringing back the black money how the common man can impact number 1 the expenditure in the form of dollars to be reduced right so the common man should reduce the expenditure in the form of dollars number 2 expenditure on the gold to be brought down so do not buy the gold unnecessarily people are buying more and more gold and they put the gold into the uh, uh, this locker right they do not wear in fact in the weddings also i have seen the ladies in my families that they are actually using that jewelry just for putting in the locker because in the weddings they are using the artificial jewelry because they want to look more smart and they want to look like uh, they want to match the jewelry to their dresses so anyways they are buying the jewelry for just keeping into the bank locker right so we should decrease the expenditure on the gold but it is very easy to say difficult to implement higher investment in government bonds treasury bills rather than gold right so we should actually invest into the government bond rather than to the gold because we invest into the gold then we have to import more gold that will increase the import bill that will actually depreciate the indian currency enhancement of the remittances from abroad and curtailment of remittances remittances to abroad so this can be this can be possible if we start sending one of our family member to outside india right so here i will like to give you an example you know the state of punjab so in punjab in every family you will get three the three brothers and the three brothers are involved in one person is going to canada so going to canada and sending the remittances to india another second brother is going to the border becoming the soldier serving the country in the form of army man uniform person and third person is actually a farmer so that can be ideal example how we can see the power of common man so this this example was for the purpose of fun only right i know that it is not possible always uh, but still these days we can see lot of middle class families they are sending their children to outside india but irony is that the children don't come back 
they stay there only that is a problem anyways the next concept is devaluation so now let us see devaluation right so far we have seen depreciation depreciation happens because of the demand and supply forces the demand and supply forces actually impact the foreign exchange rate so that is the scenario in the flexible ex flexible exchange rate regime in case of fixed exchange rate regime this fall in the external value this is known as devaluation right so devaluation is basically the deliberate downward adjustment so this deliberate downward adjustment is done by the government or the central bank of the concerned authority concerned country right so in case of fixed exchange rate regime it is the government or the central bank which is responsible for fixing the exchange rate and when that authority brings down the external value of the exchange rate brings down the ex external value of the domestic currency then that is called devaluation now the question arises why at all any country will do the devaluation why at all any country would like to reduce the value of its currency in the external market the reason is very simple just like depreciation of the currency one of the positive impact of the devaluation is that it positively impacts the export sector right so exports are incentivized and the imports are discouraged because it increases the import bill right so exports are increased and imports are decreased so this creates a favorable current account balance scenario so this is the prime reason why the this devaluation is done now you you can ask sir is there any example real life example you can give yes i can give the real life example in the real life the countries like china they are practicing this devaluation so the countries like china they do not have the 100% flexible exchange rate regime still they are following kind of fixed exchange rate regime only not not uh, apparently but definitely so they devalue their currency whenever they see that their exports are decreasing so they, they have done this already we will see so devaluation is a deliberate downward adjustment of the value of country's money relative to any other currency countries that have a fixed exchange rate right so this happens in case of fixed exchange rate or semi fixed exchange rate so this is the case of china use this monetary policy tool it is often confused with depreciation right so the impacts of devaluation is exactly similar to the depreciation the impacts are same but the factor which lead to the devaluation is different the factor is the government intervention right this is opposite of the revaluation so revaluation is basically increase in the external value now devaluation this means reduction in the external value of the home currency it is aimed so what is the aim the aim of devaluation is increasing export of the country it is usually resorted to correct the deficit in the balance of trade or current account balance right so because of the increase in export and decrease in import this will actually result into the trade surplus which will ultimately benefit result into the current account surplus right 
so you can see real world example china has has been accused of practicing a quiet currency devaluation trying to make itself a more dominant force in the trade market how how it is trying to make more dominant force by increasing the export so through the devaluation the exports are incentivized and when there are more export that means more and more market can be captured on august 5 2019 The People's Bank of China set yuan's daily reference rate below seven percent dollar for the first time in over a decade. This in response to this response to a new tariff of one ten percent on three hundred dollar billion worth of Chinese import imposed by the Trump administration, set to go into effect from September one two thousand nineteen. So, the there has been a China in the USA China trade war, right? so because of this usa china trade war usa imposed the import duty on the china product chinese product so to counter that the china actually devalued its currency so that the cost of its product in the export market come down and this tariff it will actually get nullified the trump administration responded by labeling china a currency manipulator so the us has said that china is a currency manipulator it is just the latest salvo in the us china trade war so this is basically one of the component of the us china trade war but certainly not the first time china has devalued its currency so it is not the first time that china has done this you can see effects of devaluation so this is very similar to the effects of depreciation exactly same in fact so if there is devaluation import become expensive export become cheaper right if ex if import become expensive the import quantity is declined if export become cheaper export quantity is increased and it actually results into the current account balance improvement right and if export is increased import is decreased the aggregate demand rises it results into inflation and also economic growth we have already discussed the exact exactly same diagram in case of depreciation so please read this question i am giving you 1 minute and then we will discuss so consider the following actions which the government can take and which of the above action or actions can help in reducing the current account deficit so the question is about how to reduce the current account deficit statement 1 devaluing the domestic currency so what is the impact impact is increase in the exports and decrease in the imports because of increase in the export and decrease in the import there can be reduction in the current account deficit right so statement 1 is correct reduction in export duty if export duty is reduced sorry export subsidy not duty it is subsidy what is the subsidy subsidy is basically the benefit which the government gives to the exporter so through the subsidy the government want to increase the exporter government wants that 
exporters be benefited right through the subsidy if the subsidy is reduced if the subsidy is reduced that means the export will come down if the export comes down the trade the trade balance will come down and current account deficit cannot be reduced right so the statement 2 is completely incorrect statement 3 adopting suitable policies which attract greater fdi and more fund from the funds right yeah it will attract fdi but that is the capital transaction that is the capital account transaction right this is the capital account transaction this is not the current account transaction so even this is incorrect as far as controlling the current account deficit is concerned because we are talking about the current account deficit so this capital account is not going to help so which is the correct answer answer is option a statement one only next question again i am giving you one minute So just read these two statements and identify whether A is correct or not, R is correct or not and whether R is the correct justification of the A. Okay, so A, assertion, devaluation of a currency may promote export. Yes, this is very, very correct. We have discussed many times. R, price of the country's products in the international market may fall due to devaluation. This is also true, right? So, a is the correct so r is the correct explanation of the a right so both a and r are r are in correct one now revaluation so revaluation is basically opposite of devaluation this is opposite of devaluation right so when the government or the central bank increases the external value of domestic currency intentionally then this is called revaluation so in case of revaluation the external value of the domestic currency is increased by the authority so this is also a deliberate attempt this also happens in the fixed exchange rate regime so a revaluation is calculated or intentional or, or done by the authority upward adjustment to a country's official exchange rate relative to a chosen baseline right so the chosen baseline bill can be wage rate or price of gold or foreign currency right so this is basically nothing but linking the exchange rate to some standard so in case of fixed exchange rate this actually happens that the exchange rate of the domestic currency is linked to some external factor so this factor can be the wage rate or gold price or us dollar price or sdr of imf euro or any currency so they will link the price of the domestic currency to any external indicator right so when there is an upward movement right in the linking then this is called revolution in a fixed exchange regime only a country's government such as its central bank can change the official value of the currency currency revaluation can be triggered by 
why why this will happen variety of event including changes in the interest rate between the various countries right so this can happen because of changes in the interest rate or the large scale events that impact the country this is opposite of depreciation this is completely opposite of depreciation right this means increase in the external value of home currency and what is the aim the aim is actually decreasing the export of the country and it is usually resorted to correct the surplus in the balance of trade or current account balance now the concept of appreciation the concept of appreciation is exactly opposite to the concept of depreciation right the concept of appreciation is exactly opposite to the concept of depreciation right so this appreciation and depreciation both happen because of the market forces both happen in the flexible exchange rate regime right and in both the cases it is the demand and supply forces which determine the exchange rate in case of devaluation the exchange rate is increasing and the external value is coming down in case of appreciation in the current scenario the exchange rate comes down and external value goes up so this is the reverse case so fall in the exchange rate that is increase in the external value of domestic currency so because of additional demand of the home currency or excess supply of the foreign currency right so this excess supply of the foreign currency this is one of the reason why between 2018 and 19 there has been appreciation in the value of indian currency so there has been huge supply of foreign currency because of high fdi and fii right or there can be additional demand of the home currency so what can be the reasons for the appreciation number 1 if the central bank increases the policy interest rate so if the policy interest rate are increased that means the foreign investors they will be attracted to india they will be incentivized to invest into india and that will increase the fdi and fii into india that will increase the supply of the foreign currency into india if the increase in, if there is increase in the foreign currency supply the value of the foreign currency will come down and the value of domestic currency will go up number 2 current account surplus so when there is good amount of export in that case also there can be appreciation right so because of current account surplus there will be inflow of foreign exchange and it will lead to the appreciation in the exchange rate of the domestic currency increase in the export right so this is basically the same as two only because of increase in the export only there will be current account surplus which will lead to the increase in the foreign currency intervention by the central bank through open market operations so even the open market operates through the open market operations the central bank can buy the domestic currency from the foreign exchange market and it can actually lead to the appreciation of the domestic currency right high economic growth this can also lead to the foreign investment so all these are the reasons for the rupee appreciation in any country <clears throat> now what are the impacts of the rupee appreciation number 1 exports become less competitive right so in case of de rupee depreciation export became more cheaper export revenue increased in case of appreciation this is completely opposite export become less competitive this leads to decrease in the country's export number 2 import become more cheaper and thus there is an overall increase in the import number 3 the value of the remittances is coming from abroad decreases in the domestic currency right so the impacts are completely opposite to the impacts of the depreciation you can see effects of appreciation so because of appreciation the imports become cheaper right the value of imports goes down that means the quantity of imports is imports is increased when the import quantity is increased 
and on the other hand export become more expensive and because the export become more intense in expensive the quantity of export comes down so imports are increased and exports are reduced this means the current account balance deteriorates so current account deficit it de increases basically right and because of increase in the import decrease in the export the aggregate demand for the domestic industries is go it goes down right and because of the reduction in the aggregate demand the gdp goes down that means even the economic growth goes down right economic growth goes down coming here if the imports become cheaper so there are certain products which we import for example oil prices oil oil products so in that case the inflation comes down right so it actually helps controlling the inflation so appreciation impact is successive appreciation of domestic currency can make bop adverse because it actually adversely impact the export overall inflation can be decreased this is the benefit now there is a new term currency crisis right so till now we have covered everything about exchange rate fluctuation this currency crisis is an extreme case this is an extreme case of decline in the external value of the domestic currency and this decline is not intentional this is suddenly this is out of control right so this crisis crisis means anything which happens suddenly which is out of control so in case of currency this cri currency crisis involves the sudden and steep decline in the value of a nation's currency which causes negative ripple effects throughout the economy unlike a currency devaluation as part of a trade war a currency crisis is not purposeful event it is not a purposeful event and is to be avoided right so currency devaluation is a purposive and deliberate attempt but this currency crisis is not a purposive it is out of control but a currency crisis such as hyperinflation so it can happen because of the hyperinflation so because of the hyperinflation our exports become completely uncompetitive and because of that the external value of money comes down suddenly but a currency crisis such as hyperinflation is often the result of a shoddy real economy right so this is actually indicating if there is high inflation that means the supply chains are poor infrastructure is poor the production is not happening right underlying the nation's currency in other words a currency crisis is often the symptom and not the disease of the greater economic malaise right so if any in any country the currency crisis happens this is not actually the the, the uh cause rather this is the symptom of the real economic problem right so real economic problem can be in the form of infrastructure deficit poor technology poor quality of the manpower poor ease of doing business environment because of all these factors there is no production happening resulting into hyperinflation which resulting into uh, no export or very low export resulting into the currency crisis right so currency crisis is actually the outcome of the poor economy it is not the reason real life example is asian crisis of 1997 right so we will not get into detail of 1997 asian crisis that will take a lot of time so you just need to understand that this is the concept central bank and the government can intervene to help stabilize the currency by selling of reserves of foreign currency or gold or by intervening in the foreign exchange markets now this last concept in this lecture hard currency right hard currency what is the meaning of hard currency so any currency which is acceptable by everyone and which is liquid also liquid means which can be sold very very easily so can you give the example the example is us dollar right so us dollar is one of the example of hard currency so hard currency is a currency which is widely accepted 
around the world as a form of payment for goods and services. So anyone and everyone is ready to accept that as a mode of payment. US dollar is something which everyone in this world can accept because the person knows that he or she can give to anyone and everyone will accept. A hard currency is expected to remain relatively stable. So the value of hard currency remains stable through a short period of time and to be highly liquid. That means it can be sold and purchased anytime by anyone. The hard currency generally comes from a nation with a strong economic and political situation like USA, right? So this is the meaning of the hard currency. So with this, I complete this session, right? So our exchange rate topic is also complete. In the next sessions, we will come up with the rupee convertibility and the concepts like trade agreements, WTO, etc. Right? So major portion of the exchange rate, major portion of the balance of payment and the external sector is complete. This is over. You can solve maximum number of questions that came in the previous year from this discussion only. Right? Thank you very much. God bless you.